Today, I just want to take some time to talk about how to get into reading the Bible. If you're just not really motivated to do it, or if it's something that's been really hard for you. I had a question on my YouTube channel the other day, just about how do you get into the re to reading the Bible if it's just not something you really enjoy or something that you're really motivated to do. And first of all, I want to say we've all been there, so there's no judgment. Sometimes, you know, especially certain days, it can be harder than others. And sometimes it's just really hard to get started because the Bible is a huge book. And if you're not a reader or if you just haven't found the one that's right for you or the translation that's right for you, it can be tough sometimes. So I just want to kind of want to talk about what worked for me. And hopefully one of these ideas can work for you as well if you're having that struggle right now or know someone who is. So the first thing that I would suggest and I, I've done before is to find a study Bible, you know, maybe a full color study Bible, something that's really engaging, something that can draw you in and just kind of help you with your focus there. So I have just pulled out my CSB study Bible here. There's so many out there though and pretty much every version, all the main versions that you can think of. I just grabbed this one because it's one that I use pretty often. So let me just adjust a little bit here. Okay. So you can see that the CSB Study Bible has um, outlines, it has full colors, a lot of notes, just something that can really help you if you're struggling to understand or if maybe you're struggling with focus when you're trying to read the Bible. Because again, depending on what part of it you're reading, it can be easier or harder than other portions. So I like this one just because it kind of draws me in with all the visuals and the notes and the outlines and the maps. It just kind of breaks everything down, helps you understand it a little better, and helps to keep your attention. So again, this is just one of many. And this is the CSB Study Bible, but like I said before, they have uh, full color study Bibles in the New King James Version. And, New Living Translation, King James Version, pretty much any out there that you can think of. So I don't want to do a full review of the Bible, so I just want to show you a little bit today. So that's the CSB Study Bible, and that can help you, again, if you're looking for some kind of just um, full color or study Bible to keep your interest. Another one that I have here is the Holy Land Illustrated Bible, and again, this is one with a lot of visuals and a lot of articles that are helpful and that kind of just take you back to the time period that the Bible was written in and just shows you like how people lived at that time. It just gives you a little background knowledge as you're reading the stories and wisdom of the Bible here. So that's a great one as well if you are trying to read through the Bible and you're having trouble just staying focused and remembering what you're reading or if you have trouble understanding something. Just gives you a lot of that background knowledge about the time period and just a lot of interesting articles that will really help to keep your attention. And just help you to stay engaged with what you're reading. So that's also CSB, Holy Land Illustrated Bible. And I have videos in all of these Bibles as well, so if any pique your interest, you know, feel free to go back to my channel and watch some of my other videos. Another one that's been really helpful for me in the study Bible department is the Life, Life Application Study Bible. Um, this is in the NLT, the New Living Translation, which is the first translation that I ever read completely through, cover to cover. I've done a couple others, right, um, read-throughs and different translations at this point, but this was the first one that I read through. I just like this one because it helps... Obviously, the name of the Bible is the Life Application Study Bible, so it just helps you apply all of the wisdom of the Bible to your own life, which is so helpful because you don't just want to read it. You want to also apply it and make it, you know, remember what you read, value it, and use it in your own life. So that's why I really like the notes in this one. This one's not as colorful as the ones I just showed you, but... It's really helpful. It's actually one of my favorite study Bibles. It has like character profiles and maps and, and the notes just help you apply everything to your life. 
there's a lot of charts, there's book introductions. It's just a whole lot of great features in that one as well. So that's the Life Application Study Bible. So another thing I would suggest, excuse my reach here, is to interact with your Bible. So not just read it, but actually interact with it and take it to heart. So you're not just reading it as something to check off a list. So here are a couple ways that I do that personally. So this is my ESV uh, large print journaling Bible from Hosanna Revival. The text block being from Crossway as it's ESV. So what I do when I'm reading through, I'm currently reading through the New Testament, is I highlight based on just a plan that I saw from the Daily Grace Co., which I'll show you in a minute. So I go through, I do my reading for the day, I highlight, and then I take some notes in the margin. So I'm not just reading it, and I'm not just doing it to say, hey, I read my Bible today. I mean, that's great. We want to read our Bibles every day if we can, but... I'm actually engaging with it, interacting with it. It helps me remember what I read. And just, yeah, just helps me really do more than just say, hey, I read my Bible today. So you can see I use this one a lot as the front pages here are creasing because I've been using it pretty much every day and I put washi tape in it, etc. So I, I decorate some of my Bibles. I have this code right here that I used, or my guide, I should say, to help me with highlighting. I'll just leave that up for a second. And that's how I do my highlighting and then take my notes and engage with my Bible that way. So that is my ESV journaling Bible. So besides highlighting and taking notes, another thing you could do is get yourself a coloring Bible, if that's something like art journaling or coloring is something that appeals to you, is something that's going to help you meditate on the Word of God as you're reading it, you could pick up one of these Bibles or you could do your own artwork in just a regular journaling Bible. So I have the Inspire Prayer Bible and I haven't colored in all of these yet, but I just kind of take some verses and color them in the margins, meditate on them, highlight I have some prayers that I journaled in here because they give you prayer prompts in this Bible. I've done little things like stickers and washi tape just to help me remember some key verses. And there's lines in the margins of this Bible too so you can take notes if that's what you like to do. So just another way to engage with your Bible is to color and Bible journal. Just get one more that I did here. And it can just be simple. It doesn't have to be anything crazy. I am no artist. Anyone who knows me I'm the furthest thing from that. So that's why I like having the pictures to already, already provided for me so I can just meditate, color, and enjoy them that way. So art journaling, Bible journaling, that's another way that you can um, get yourself more into reading the Bible. Another thing that you can do here is to engage with your Bible through maybe writing in a journal or just kind of asking yourself some questions or prompts as you read. So the Abide Bible from Thomas Nelson is a great one for that. It's available in the Net Translation and also the New King James Version. So they give you prompts um, praying scripture, they give you prompts to journal, they give you contemplate prompts, picture it, so you can picture yourself kind of in the situation or story that you're reading. They also give you art, um, engage through art, so you see a painting or a picture of some sort, and then it gives you a prompt to go with that. So this is a great one, you can, you can write in the Bible if you want, there is some space but obviously the space is a little limited because of the prompts themselves that are in the margins. So you could just get yourself a journal and just journal some of these answers down as you go. Okay, so that's the Abide Bible. Another Bible that you could use to help you 
interact with and engage with your reading and I apologize I'm shaking my camera so terribly today so please forgive me for that but another one you could use is this quest study Bible and this Bible is unique because instead of just having study notes like a traditional study Bible it has questions questions and answers so you could journal about you know some questions that are in here and, and you know the answers that they give you or you know what maybe what you thought as opposed to what you found in here what you learned um, you could talk about you know if you just something is interesting to you something that stood out to you so that's a unique Bible as well to help you engage just have those questions and answers it just kind of makes you think about the Bible in a fresh new way so speaking of that Excuse my arm reach once more. I have a ton of Bibles out here on the table, so I'm just trying to get to all of them. So speaking of, how, of looking at the Bible in a new way, you could also use a chronological Bible, or you could just get a plan to read the Bible chronologically. So this just, I just think it helps you to read the Bible chronologically because it helps you put everything together. Just sometimes, you know, we're taking bits and pieces here and there. We're hearing some verses that, you know, from a sermon in church or we find, a, we look up verses on like anxiety or, you know, I don't know, whatever you're looking up verses on. And that's all great and fine, but sometimes it's good to read the whole Bible in context and just see it all together. And how does the Old Testament fit with the New Testament? And why is this book significant? And what part and role does it have in the whole big story of scripture. So I just pulled this one out. This is the Chronological Life Application Study Bible. This isn't one you'd be able to like carry to church and follow along in because like I said, it's chronological. So it's not in the order that the traditional Bible is. The books aren't in order. It's just kind of mixed up all over depending on when it was written, putting it in chronological order. So this one has the Bible in that order, so you can see how it fits all together. It has notes, it has full color, it has timelines. So this would be a great one for just to read through and see how does it all fit together. You know, for instance, until I read the chronolo a chronological reading plan a couple years ago, I didn't realize that Job was actually one of the first books written. I mean, or maybe not the first book written I don't know if I'm saying that correctly, so I apologize if I'm not. But it was from an earlier time period. Like it was during the time period of, of the patriarchs, like in Genesis. So it fits in that time period. So I didn't know that before I read the Bible, at all, the, the chronological Bible. So that can be really helpful just to learn these little things and just to see how the Psalms, for instance, that King David wrote, like how they fit into his actual life. When did he write this psalm? What was going on in his life when he was writing this and thinking this and feeling this way? So it's just a really interesting way to read through the Bible and engage with scripture and just see how it all fits together. Okay, so another thing, uh, and I don't have a particular Bible to show you for this, but it's to just start in the New Testament. Sometimes it's easier to understand and read through the New Testament and don't get me wrong here, the Old Testament is equally important. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying if you're new to the Bible if you're having, or if you're having trouble understanding and engaging with it, the New Testament might be a good place to start, particularly like in the book of John. You could start there and just read about the life of Jesus or any of the Gospels, really. Um, the book of Romans is really beneficial because it just outlines the whole Christian faith. So a good, that's another good um, way, thing to do is to start by reading the New Testament. And another thing, and I don't have another Bible to show you for this either, but you can follow along with using a audio Bible or the, the version app is great for that. So just grab your favorite Bible and your favorite translation. The U, version app has many different translations and you can have someone read it to you while you follow along. Or if you have trouble with reading or you know, if you have a, a disability in reading, that might be a good way also to help you follow along and read. Okay, so I'm going to grab a couple more here. Another thing that you could do is read the Bible in a translation that's a little easier to understand. 
And again, please don't get me wrong. I'm not knocking any translations. I, You know me. If you watch my channel, I have tons of Bibles and many different translations. I love almost all of them that are out there. Uh, but it, sometimes it's just easier to engage and understand when you use something that's in just easier to understand English, or maybe English is your second language, etc. So I found in my reading experience that the CSB, Christian Standard Bible, and the NLT, the New Living Translation, are two translations that are fairly easy to understand. So those are two you could start with if you're not really sure where to go and where to start. The NIV, the New International Version, that's also one that's fairly easy to understand as well. So this is just one that I just pulled this out because this is in the CSB translation. You could also read with a friend or a small group, just give you that accountability and you can just have discussions about what you're reading in that group. So that can also be helpful. And my last tip here is just pick a Bible that you love and are comfortable with. I know it's hard in today's world because there's not a lot of bookstores, especially Christian bookstores, open anymore. I know I don't have very many in my area anymore, if any. So I do most of my shopping online, as I'm sure a lot of you do as well. But just try to find one that is comfortable for you and that you really enjoy, that you love, and that's going to help you be motivated to get into God's Word daily. You don't have to be crazy like me and have like tons of Bibles. I think I have like 30 Bibles in my house right now. And guys, I would probably have like 200 if I didn't give just give a whole bunch away to charity and just give a bunch to other people. And But yes, anyway, so you don't have to be my brand of crazy. You can just, you know, pick one or two that you like and are going to help you engage with God and the Bible. I love personally Skylar Bibles. And you can get these from evangelicalbible.com. Now, they're expensive, and again, another disclaimer, you do not need an expensive Bible to engage and love and understand God's Word. No, you don't. You can have a paperback Bible that you bought for a dollar, and it's going to be the same. If that works for you and that helps you engage with God, great. It's the same thing as having this one here that's expensive. So just wanted to say that too, because not everyone can always do that at this time in their lives. So, but I do like the Schuyler Bibles just because they're really well made. So they're going to last you a lifetime. And I just, I like the font size. I like the layout. And it's just a really great one that can help you be motivated to read every day. Like this is a really nice Bible. It feels good in your hands. And it sounds superficial, but I mean, if it's going to get you into God's word daily, and it's going to get you to pick it up and enjoy it. And there you go. That's another way. Another one I have that I just enjoy holding and reading. This is from um, Thomas Nelson from their premiere collection. It's the New King James Version single column. And this one is just as beautiful and you can get it for like half the price of a Skylar. So it's still expensive because it's, you know, it's real leather and it's premier collection, but you can get it for a little less and still have that premium reading experience. So if you like the New King James Version, this is another one that I found that I enjoy just holding and reading and picking it up pretty often. Another one that I have, and th this is the CSB She Reads Truth Bible. This one you can get for like $30, so it's not a super expensive one. But I just found that this is one that I just like picking up and reading. I like the single column. That's what kind of got me into reading more single column Bibles, which I have a video on that as well, about how much I enjoy that format. I, I just liked the artwork and the book introductions, and I especially love the reading plans because it gives you some scripture to read, and then it gives you scripture to go with that that's from other areas in the Bible. So I just recently read through this whole She Reads Truth Bible, and it's just one that was comfortable for me and that I enjoyed picking up and reading every day. So I hope that's helpful. This is a super long video, but I hope that's helpful to you just to give you some ideas. Not every idea is going to work for you and it's, you know, it's, that's fine. Everybody's different, but hopefully one of those tips will be helpful for you. And I just hope that this video will maybe give you some fresh ideas if you're a seasoned Christian or if you're new give you some ideas of where to start, or just motivate you today to pick up your Bible and read.